of action has been happening at the Battle River Ranch Camp. I'm Kathy Lee and I'll show you how far they've come in just a couple weeks. Although the course doesn't start until this fall, these students won't waste any time. This summer they'll take home these flip cameras and videotape a project about themselves that they'll put together when school starts. Kathy Lee, New Cap News. To keep the arena cool, insulation has been put on the outside of the boards and this black cloth hung on the windows to keep the sun out. Right now, this ice behind me can be used by groups who've pre-booked except for public skating. If everything goes according to plan, both arenas should be running by Wednesday of next week. The green bins that used to be placed behind the store are now gone. They were removed last Friday. This week is the first for the new system to be put to the test and so far the change seems to be catching on. Now, if you have a TV that gets a signal through an antenna you may not need to rush out and buy a brand new TV set just yet. Hooking this converter box up may be all that's required for you to still get a signal once the switchover happens. Powders, protein shakes, okay, it may be a little overwhelming for some of you, so if supplements aren't your thing, there are foods you can eat after working out to maximize your recovery. The growing population here is a reason why people like Galloway have a hard time not only finding housing, but one that's affordable. The government of Saskatchewan has just released the details of an eight-year housing strategy plan they hope will help the problem. This is Newcap News. Lily Choi, the former foster mother convicted of manslaughter and the killing of a three-year-old boy in her care, has been given a six-year prison sentence. It is double the three-year term she received at her first trial, but for some, it's still not enough. After decades in the grip of a ruthless dictator, it's time for citizens of Libya to celebrate. The announcement of Muammar Gaddafi's death has sent a euphoric echo throughout the country. The National Transitional Council saying it's a time of liberation. St. Mary's students took a trip around the world this afternoon. The school wrapped up Education Week with a school assembly dedicated to diversity. For the second straight weekend, an Alberta community is mourning after losing multiple young lives to a car crash. In this case, four teenage boys are dead and another is clinging to life in hospital after they were struck by a pickup truck near Grand Prairie. It began in the heart of New York's financial district four weeks ago. The Occupy movement has been steadily gaining support since then and today protesters took over downtown parks and streets in several cities right across Canada. We're going to take a short break from news right now. Aaron joins me at the desk with some sports. We were talking earlier about the Lloydminster Bandits. They couldn't get the job done last year in the finals, but a lot of guys, as you were saying, they've returned and things are looking up for them right now. Yeah, I guess the cold lake ice last year. He created products that changed the world and Canadians were among the first to embrace them. In Toronto, customers flocked to Apple stores this week to share their thoughts on the passing of Steve Jobs. Lloydminster RCMP implemented a check stop today, part of an ongoing drive to increase awareness that members are on the lookout for drivers who make unsafe choices. Despite people's awareness of the laws and the statistic that not wearing a seatbelt greatly increases a person's chance of injury or death in the event of a crash, it's not uncommon for the RCMP to issue a number of violation tickets. Given the proximity to the downtown core, a lot of motorists are not wearing their seat belts. A lot of motorists are on cell phones. Florida teenager was doing some fishing when he hooked something big and he reeled in an alligator that was three and a half meters long, over 10 feet. It weighs 363 kilograms. The young fisherman caught it with a rod and reel meant for bass. His dad is a taxidermist and he says the gator is chilling <laughs> in the family freezer and the head will be mounted in his son's room. It reminds wow. me of like Happy Gilmore when they like show the head to Chubbs and he like That's falls right, out the window. Yes. Oh. Could you imagine how terrified that guy must have been to like be ruling in this <laughs> alligator? And how do you just like kill it? Oh, I don't like, know, unless it was oh. it was dead already. Fish but. are so easy. <laughs> yes. I've had alligator before, have you guys? No. No, I'd never. only wear it on my, sh on my feet <laughs> or in a handbag, that's all. <laughs> you wear it? You know what, surprisingly, huh. and I'm not saying this because everyone says it, it does taste like chicken. Really? Yeah, I was in Thailand no. and we had alligator. Yeah. Again, I'll probably never try it. Oh, well, it was chopped into little bits and pieces, so they sautéed it and stuff. Mm. Yeah, it was good. You guys should try it one day. Yeah. She's in a handbag. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching us. Have a great evening. Good night. Good night. Good afternoon everyone, I'm Kathy Lee with an update of your local forecast. In the Midwest region today, we'll get up to high of 10 with a mix of sun and clouds. More clouds rolling in tonight with a low of 3. Windy tomorrow, west winds gusting up to 50 kilometers an hour and a high of 11. 
In the Lakeland region, clear skies, a high of 9, 1 tonight. Again, west winds gusting up to 50 kilometers an hour. They'll get up to high of 10 tomorrow. And in the Battlefords, 11 mix of sun and clouds, 2 tonight and 13 degrees tomorrow. Let's take a look at that radar satellite map in the last 12 hours. Our area seems to be evading all that precipitation for now. You can see to the west of us, they had some ice over there and some more precipitation. Overnight low seasonal, but still uh, in the chilly side. To minus 2 in the Lakeland region, minus 4 in the Midwest, minus 2 in Wainwright as we hop over to the border, minus 4 in the Me in Meadow Lake, and minus 3 in the Battlefords. Let's take a look at your five-day forecast. Crews have been working all night. I've been told because of the weight of the bridge span, a second crane has been brought in from ADM. And as you can see behind me, the section over the eastbound road has been removed and is now resting on its side. Not at a snail's pace, but still out of the way. Vehicles have been rerouted on this back road east of the city since yesterday afternoon. The detour to steer clear of this mess. It's just a good thing there was nobody falling close. Um, this was a catastrophe averted. It's bad enough. It's going to cost millions of dollars, uh, but there was no loss of life. Reports indicate an excavator attached to the back of a transporter truck hit the Canadian Pacific owned overpass. It was an over limit, uh, over height limit load um, that caught the five meter one uh, bridge clearance. And CP officials are still reconstructing how something like this could have happened. As you can appreciate, trucks use that highway every day and pass under the bridge without incident. This is a very unusual circumstance. So we're going to take the time to investigate it. Now that the section of the overpass has been removed, engineers will have to examine the damages. We will inspect the bridge span, the, the, the steel structure, to determine if it can be salvaged or if it will have to be replaced. Once that determination is made, we will, uh, we will make decisions on, uh, on, on putting the bridge back into service. While Highway 16 is heavily congested with large transport trucks and other vehicles daily, business should run close to a normal schedule despite the delay. So it happens and we as an industry have to be adaptable, and we are, to uh, uh, finding workarounds. There are rerouting options available for, for trains servicing either local customers in Lloydminster or uh, our interprovincial trains, and we're making use of those reroutes uh, so that our customer shipments are, uh, are minimally impacted by the incident. So far, it's been projected that the westbound side of the road should open up to traffic by later on this evening and tomorrow by midday, one side of the eastbound road will open up as well. Reporting from Highway 16 east of Lloydminster, I'm Kathy Lee. Jacob, this isn't the first time the Maidstone Health Complex has experienced a shortage of doctors. Four is what they need to provide 24-7 emergency assistance. Right now, they're down by two. For the last three months, Ida Mead has been by her husband's side taking care of him in the palliative ward. My significant other, Alvin, has got cancer and he's in the final phase. Living in Cut Knife, their hospital shut down. So the only other choice was to travel 30 minutes to Maidstone for assistance. I needed a doctor and, more, and nurses to help me at, ho at home. I couldn't do it, so we came here. Despite the traveling time, the couple is thankful to have had a doctor's care a service that will now be hard to find in Maidstone. We have to um, interrupt our ER services. We have to um, suspend the admission of acute care patients into our hospital. The reason? A physician shortage. But Sylvester says patients will be directed to the closest emergency department if needed. If someone was to walk into our facility as an emergency and we didn't have physician coverage, they would still certainly be seen, assessed by a registered nurse. Doctor shortages is an ongoing problem for the region, a consequence the Meads have also had to endure. There's always that if and wonder, you know, is, you know, is he going to be around when, I, when we really need him? Um, where before 
There was always a doctor around. Sylvester says due to limited physician resources, it's hard to keep doctors in their area. But with a new Saskatchewan-based process, he hopes they can recruit more. It used to be uh, 55 physicians that they would assess you know, under the old system, and now uh, they have the ability of, of uh, assessing up to 90 physicians. And for the sake of her husband and others, Ida hopes recruitment comes quickly. In our case, we're hoping that we get a new doctor soon and that things don't get shut down for any great length of time. Sylvester says they've already contacted two potential physicians to fill the roles. However, it could take as long as March of next year to have a full staff up and running again. Reporting in Maidstone, Kathy Lee, New Cap News. Three, two, one. Good afternoon, I'm Michael Carroll. And nope, this isn't our new weather specialist. With coaching from one of Newcap's meteorologists, Michael Carroll is learning how to do the weather for fun. The high is 16, I'm dropping down to 2 tonight. But it's not what he had expected. That was very difficult. I struggled with it quite a bit at first. It's, it's quite a talent to be able to do that. As part of a practicum in the Global Media Studies program, Carol is the first of his classmates to see how newsmaking starts here. We say one person was bleeding severely and, and ends here. We make it look easy, but it is. There's a lot of hard work and time and training that goes into being able to perfect your craft. And I think it's important for viewers and for the students to see that this isn't a glamorous job by any means. From the control room to the news desk, Jessie Mann hopes her students learn valuable lessons in the workforce. Not necessarily all of our students are looking at being reporters or cameramen in the future, but I think that building those skills and figuring out what um, and how the media works will provide a tremendous amount of um, skill development for them. Developing life skills isn't the only goal. News delivery is a topic Jessie Mann covers in her class and hopes students will take the message home by seeing how it's done for themselves. Right from local media to national media to international media, it's important for the kids to understand how the news is brought to different people. The student shadow a day opportunity is a two-way streak. It's also rewarding for our new cap team. Well, we get to have a student come in here and we get to deliver some information to them that um, you know that they're going to see in a real world environment that we're putting the news together. Uh, but we also get that fresh face in here as well, that fresh set of eyes that I think uh, ups everybody's game in the newsroom as well. And since Carol is the guinea pig of his group, he's able to pass on some of his own words of wisdom to his peers. Uh, just be prepared to have a busy day. Really, it's not just sitting around and watching people do stuff. You get to interact and have fun. Throughout the day, Mike has been documenting his experience on these flip cameras. After he's done his practicum today, he'll edit the video and present it to his class and his teacher tomorrow. Reporting from the New Cap Studios, I'm Mike Carroll. And I'm Kathy Lee.